Welcome to Church Online. It's such an honor that I get to share God's word with you today. There's something I want to share and I hope it will speak into your life today. It's something that's been burning inside of my heart and I'm really trusting that God is going to speak into your life today. He's going to change and challenge you forever. I believe when we get around God's word, there's something that's powerful. We believe that God's word is powerful. It's alive and it's active today. And When we get to spend time in God's word, it speaks into our lives. So let's prepare our hearts, let's pray, and let's jump into God's Word today. Jesus, we thank you so much for your love. Thank you that we get to be here today, God. Wherever we're watching from, God, if it's in our room, our, our living room, God, if it's in our office or in our car, God, wherever it might be, Jesus, thank you that your presence is there with us. Even though we are physically disconnected, God, you are connecting us spiritually. So we thank you for that, God. I pray that your word would speak into our hearts today, God. They wouldn't be my words, but it would be your words, God, that speak to us. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen. Amen. So I want to title this talk today, Shoulda, Coulda, Woulda. You know, being a young person, I'm only 24 years old, but I look back at my life and I see there's so many things that I regret. There's decisions that I've made, there's words that I've said, there's conversations that I had. And I look back now and I think about it and I say, should have done something different, could have said something different, and I would have been in a different situation right now. What are the things in your life that you look back and you kind of regret? There's conversations that you had where somebody might have offended you and you kind of blew your top off and you got angry and you fought with them, or it might have been a decision that you made and, and it shouldn't have been a decision that you made, you should have done something else. We look back at our lives and we, we look at these things and this expression should have, could have, would have means it's a, it's a disappointment concerning a statement, an action or something that might have been done or happened in the past with these thinking about these hypothetical possibilities or missed opportunities that we think about. So today I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to give you three, not points, but responses that I want us to follow, want us to take steps in. And I believe when we do this, it's going to be something that's different. And I think a lot of the times, the reason why we make these wrong mistakes or do the wrong things is because we're not listening to the right voice. You see, there's so many voices in the world today. It could be voices of social media, of Instagram, of Facebook, or what you're watching on the news channel, or the doctor's voice, or family members that's talking down on you, or what one of the biggest voices I think in my life is the inner me. That my enemy becomes my enemy. You see the voices that run through my head saying, so again, you're not going to be good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not going to be like that guy. Or you might be sitting at home thinking, what's the inner voices that's been speaking to you? You might be saying, man, you're not going to be a good enough parent. You can't be a grade two teacher coaching your child through school in this time. Your business is failing. Your teenagers are rebellious or you might be sitting there and you're studying and you're in school or university and you're thinking, man, I don't know how I'm going to pass this year. All these voices start speaking to our lives and it becomes the loudest voice in our lives. And if you want to, if I want to leave one statement with you today, one thing, if, even if you forget everything else that I say today, that you will take this one thing home with you today. It says the voice that you listen to today determines where you would be tomorrow. The voice that you listen to today determines where you would be tomorrow. So Jesus speaks about voices. And we're going to pick it up if you have your Bible and your notebooks. Open up your, your Bible to the book of John chapter 10. Jesus just comes after performing a miracle and healing people. And we pick up the story and Jesus tells people this. He tells them this in chapter 10 verse 1. He says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a voice of a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. You see, Jesus speaks about voices here. He speaks about these voices that sneak into our lives, these things that sneak into our life that want to destroy our lives. And what happens is when life gets busy, when life gets crazy, when we need to make a decision now that's going to maybe determine our future, we need to make a decision what's going to happen in our business or a decision of what school to send my kids to. We have all these decisions to make and life gets busy and chaotic. We stop listening to the voice of Jesus and we start listening to the other voices of the world. 
could be the voice of the enemy speaking into your life saying, you're never going to make it. You're not good enough. Look how far you are from God. Look how many mistakes you've made. Or it could be the voices of your inner me saying, I'm not smart enough. I don't know what the future holds for me. I feel sad. I feel alone. I feel down. You see what happens when all of these things happen in our life, when all this craziness and voices start speaking to our lives. We need to take a moment to pause. That's our first response today is to pause. When it's crazy, when it's busy, when there's a lot of things going on, when I take a moment to pause, it means that I'm taking a moment to position myself to hear from God. When I take a moment in the craziness and I just breathe, pause, irrespective of what situation or circumstance I'm facing. When I take a moment to pause, I'm positioning myself to hear from Jesus. You see, there's all these voices that's coming at you. There's all these voices that's speaking into your life. But when I take a moment, when you take a moment to pause, we position ourselves to hear the voice of our Savior. You see, the thing is that Jesus has never stopped talking. He's always talking. The problem is we never take in time to pause and listen. The second response is for us to pray. When I pause, I take a moment and I pray. When I pray, it means I'm submitting my will, my desires, my plans for my future to God's purposes, desires, and plans for my future. You see, these two things come hand in hand. When I pause, I can take a moment to pray. You see, when I pray, God answers my prayers. When I pray, God speaks to me. When I pray, God speaks into my heart. It's never, I've never heard the audible voice of God, and I hope I do one day. It might be amazing. But you see, it's always this tugging in my heart. When the decision that I need to make, or when I'm standing in the shops and I'm angry, or when Talia and I are, are arguing about something, and before I lash out and I fight back, or if it's a decision that I need to make for my future, and when I just rush into it without pausing and praying, I look at my life and I say, man, I should have, could have, would have. I would have been in a better place. I should have listened to Jesus. I should have listened to counsel. I could have made the right decision. And now I would be in a different place. But so often we wouldn't take time to pause. And we wouldn't take time to pray. Because when I pause, I position myself to hear from my Savior. I position myself to hear from the Good Shepherd. And when I pray... I don't only pray my words, but I spend time in God's word. And I pray the words that he has spoken over my life. And the third thing, the third response that we take is there's a promise. You see, God has a promise for your life. God has a promise for you. He wants to use you. He wants to shape you. He wants to speak into your life. God has a promise not only for me or for the pastors or for preachers, but he has a promise for you. This promise of this rich and satisfying life. In John 10, verse 10 and 11, it reads this. The, perp the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says this, my purpose is to give them rich and satisfying life. Another version says abundant life, life to its full. In verse 11, it says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. You see, the enemy wants to steal your promise from God. He wants to kill your dreams and he wants to destroy your future. You see, there's a battle happening for you, for your attention, for your life. See, on the one hand, we have the enemy. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his target. That's his man. And every morning he wakes up and he's like, I want to destroy your life. But Jesus comes and he says something different. He says that I have come to give them rich and satisfying, abundant life. You see, the satisfying, abundant life isn't, it's not that your life is going to be easy and perfect. It's not going to be comfortable. It doesn't mean that you're going to live a long life, many years. But what it does mean is that you have this satisfying life, this hope, this joy, this peace with Jesus you see, when I come to Jesus and I pause and I pray, I get to walk in the promises that God has for me. So today I want to ask you the question is, 
What is the voices that you've been listening to? Is it the voices of the world? Is it the voice of social media? You're looking at other people's lives and the enemy starts saying, man, I'm never gonna be like that. I'm never gonna be successful. I'm never gonna be smart like that. I'm never gonna get my degree. I'm not gonna have a business that's successful. I can't be like all these other parents who's posting all these Instagram photos of how great homeschooling is and you know it's tough at home. All these enemy voices start speaking into my life and it becomes the loudest voice and I start listening to them and I start reacting to those voices and that becomes the voice that I follow. Or would you take a moment to pivot today and say, Jesus, I want to hear your voice. Yes, I've given my life to Jesus and I follow Jesus but I've kind of dimmed that voice of God and I started following my own voice, the inner me voice or the voice of the world, the voice of my family members, the voice of people telling me what to do. But today I wanna make a decision to start following the voice of Jesus, taking a moment to pause, taking a moment to pray. And then we get to walk into the promise that God has for us. Or if you heard about Jesus for the first time today, this good shepherd that lays down his life for you and me. That 2,000 years ago, Jesus came down to this earth and He died on the cross for my sins, for your sins. And He says that He wants to have a personal relationship with you. He calls you and I His sheep. I wish that Jesus would have called us like tigers or something cool, like a, a proper animal, not just a sheep. But you see, a sheep isn't that smart. A sheep needs a shepherd. A sheep needs somebody to guide them. And when you and I come to Jesus and we say, God, I want to start following you as my shepherd. I'm done living the way that I'm living. I want to follow you. The amazing thing is that no matter how far you have gone, no matter what mistakes you've made in your past, no matter how far you might seem that you are far from God, God never disqualifies you. That nobody is too far from the reach of God. So today I want to pray for two groups of people. The first group is saying, I follow Jesus and I give my heart to Him, but I started following other voices. And now I look back at my life and I, I, I shoulda, coulda, woulda been in a better situation. I regret a lot of decisions that I've made, but today I want to start listening to the voice of my shepherd. And the second group of people I want to pray for today is those who say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I'm tired of living life my own way. I'm this wandering sheep, but I need a shepherd who's going to guide me, who's going to lead me. My savior, my Lord, my best friend. I would love to pray for you. So would you close your eyes where you are in your room, in your home? And the Bible says when we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, he comes into our lives. All we need to do is believe it by faith. And friend, I'm telling you today that this is the best decision that you would ever make in your life. Is to pause, pray, and walk into the promise that God has for you. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for your love. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our good shepherd. That no matter what we've done, where we've gone, God, the past is a past, but you have a plan and a purpose for our future, God. You want a personal relationship with us. You want us to walk into the purposes and the plans that you have for our lives. So today, Jesus, we commit to start following your voice, hearing your voice, God, taking a moment to pause, to pray, and to walk in the promise that you have for us, God. And I pray for the second group of people, God, who's saying, I'm far away from God, but I want to I wanna reconnect. I want to give my life over to Jesus, this good shepherd that died for me, that I could walk in freedom, that I could be promised eternal life. I pray for them today, Jesus, that as they make the decision to follow you, that their lives will be changed forever, that you would come into their lives and change their lives forever. Let them know that they are loved by you, that they are called by your name, that you have a plan and a purpose for them. We thank you for your love. Thank you that you are a good shepherd. And thank you that you want to give us this rich and satisfying life, this abundant life. Help us walk into this promise, God. Help us take time to pause daily, to pray daily, and to walk into the promise that you have for our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen. That was such an encouraging message. I know it makes me so excited to see what God is doing in the lives of individuals and communities through the local church. If you would like to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life today, then click on the first link in the description below. 
or you can send us a message on the number on the screen and we'll get back to you. We'd love to walk a journey alongside you and help you in your next steps in being a follower of Jesus. We know that community is so important to our growth. If you'd like to find out how you can get connected through Zoom groups, find out more information about Growth Track, or simply get in contact with us, send us your name and your surname to the church number on the screen and we'll get back to you. New Life Volunteers, this one is for you. Get ready because on the 3rd of June at 6 p.m., we'll be having our first online team night on Zoom. Make sure to register on our website by clicking on the team night banner for a night of fun, encouragement, and connection. Thank you for watching Church Online. Don't forget to switch on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. Remember, each one, reach one, stay blessed, and keep shining for Jesus.